So who makes more power, VS or Borg? In this video, we're gonna compare this Gen 2 7875 turbo from VS Racing to an S475 from Borg Warner. Now, is this an absolute test? Not even close. Whichever one does better doesn't mean that a VS Racing turbo is better than all Borg Warner turbos, or that all Borg Warner turbos are better than all VS Racing turbos. In fact, this test doesn't even have the same specs on the turbos. They just happen to be two turbos that I have laying around. So it's less about an ultimate test than it is about testing two turbos that I happen to have. What I want to see is, are there differences? Can we attribute those differences to the differences in design? Okay, it might not be the ultimate turbo test, but it is a turbo test. We've got a turbo motor up on the dyno. It's already running. We're already making boosts. And we've got two turbos. I mean, you gotta run them both, right? Let's find out what happened. Our test motor was a 4.8 liter LR4. The only change we made to it was a set of JE Forge pistons. Also had Snake Eater 1500 injectors and all tuned by a Holly HP management system. Turbo kit with some nothing fancy, stock exhaust manifolds, which you get when you go to the wrecking yard if you get a motor. We made a Y pipe, Jason over at JFab whipped that thing up. And ours, we actually ran two wastegates, although it's probably overkill. We just wanted it on the dyno. We have better control that way. There seems to be more need for that on the engine dyno than there is out on the street and the chassis dyno, but you can get away with one. For our turbo test, we made sure to have plenty of exhaust flow. It's one of the critical elements in turbo performance. Not so much the exhaust feeding the turbo, but the exhaust exiting the turbo. So we want that as big as possible, and we didn't want to restrict either one of these turbos. For both the turbos, we ran this Procharger air and water intercooler. And it was fed by Dyna water in both instances. Both of the turbos exited through this three and a half inch discharge tube. Got turbo Smart. An OG Turbo Smart blow off valve. I know they're going to yell at me for not using the new one. Nothing fancy up top. Factory truck intake. I mean, you know, why do anything else? It came with the motor. For our turbo testing, we relied on a set of 1500 Snake Eater injectors. We've got more than enough fuel, even running E85. I mean, we got a ton of fuel. We can go way into four digit stuff. These are working well. For our turbo comparison, we relied on a TC1 turbo controller to control the boost. Make sure that it was set and nice and even all the way across. We have uh, enough spring in the wastegate to go way beyond the tested boost level. So the, the controller has perfect control over it. All right, I got the S475 on. Same intercooler and everything. Exhaust hook right up. Makes a pretty easy swap. Let's find out how much power it makes. Despite the fact that this test was about comparing two different turbos, I wanted to include the NA power output of our test motor. It was a 4.8 liter with the forged pistons, had head studs and gaskets on it, but stock head, stock intake manifold, had those big snake eater injectors and an air water intercooler. When we ran it with the turbo, but when we ran it NA with our Summit 
8720 camshaft. It produced 416 horsepower and 400 or 370 foot pounds of torque. So here's what happened. You know, so it was a good start. Basically, this was a cammed 4.8 liter. So now let's take a look at the S475 or the uh, VS Racing Turbo. We ran this, we were commanding on our TC1 electronic wastegate controller, we were commanding 18 pounds of boost, and we got a fairly uh, flat boost curve, and I'll show you the curves in just a minute. So equipped in this manner, our VS Racing Turbo on the 4.8 liter, produced 810 horsepower, you know, nice good curve, and 766 foot-pounds of torque. So you can see, pretty stout, I mean... A cam 4.8 liter with boost pretty good stuff so now let's take a look and see we'll do the comparison with the s475 borg warner turbo so here is the same thing with the borg warner turbo now there are a couple of things that are real important about these curves first of all if you look down low below say 3600 rpm the s475 in red was a lot more responsive down low. It came up on boost immediately. Uh, you know, it was basically at just about full boost on the load in on this. And the engine dyno doesn't show boost response very well, but it definitely shows it here because with the VS Racing Turbo, we weren't able to get full boost until we released the dyno and it, it started to get happy. So the S475 would definitely be more responsive than the uh, VS Racing Turbo, but on the flip side, out at the top, the VS Racing Turbo made more power at the same boost level. And it's interesting to note that on our TC1 controller, when we installed the S475 Turbo, that we had to command another half pound of boost on the TC1 controller to get the boost curves to actually be the same. So it was interesting that that happened, and I think we have a reason for that when we take a look at the boost pressure and back pressure curves. So the VS Racing Turbo, more power at the same boost, and the air, fuel, and timing were kept constant. More power at the same boost, a little bit less responsive, and I think that that's a direct function of the hot sides of these turbos. The S475 was obviously uh, a tighter. It had a 1.0 AR and the VS Racing 1.25, so I think that that had a major effect. So now let's take a look at our boost curves. If we take a look at the boost curves supplied by each one, starting with the boost curve from VS Racing, now we had commanded 18 pounds on our TC1 boost controller, and we got it, uh, you know, in the 4,500 to 5,000 RPM range. It was a little bit shy in a couple of other places and seemed to fall off kind of at the top there, which is interesting. Now, if we compare that to the S475, and this big dip you're here seeing in the blue, um, that's just a reading, uh, a faulty reading on the dynos. We have the data logging from the Holly because we use a Holly HP management system. The data logging is perfectly smooth. And we we're also obviously watching that on a mechanical gauge too. And so it was perfectly smooth. There was no dip there and there's nothing indicated in the power curve either. But you can see that we got the boost curves uh, real consistent. But as look down below 3500 RPM and you'll see why there's such a big difference on the power curve. Um, the boost comes on, we had almost, well, basically full boost on the S475, even on the load in 3100 RPM, whereas we had about uh, 10 and a half or 11 pounds on the VS Racing Turbo. So I, I may have made a mistake there. On the S475, we had full boost. On the VS Racing, we only had 10 or 11 pounds on the load in. And may, maybe that'll help you. <laughs> maybe that'll help you launch if you don't want all the boost. But the S475, definitely more responsive. Otherwise, the boost curves were pretty consistent after that, and but the power curves obviously showed that the the VS Racing Turbo made more power than the S475 out at the top. And I think that the answer lies in the back pressure curves. We're going to take a look at that now. Now we can take a look at the back pressure versus boost pressure curves, and this is on the VS Racing Turbo. You can see that um, the back pressure started out quite a bit lower than boost pressure. We had... 10.5 pounds of boost pressure, but only 7.1 pounds of back pressure. And the crossover point where it started making more back pressure than boost pressure was 5,200 RPM. And out here at the top, when we got the drop in back pressure, or boost pressure, 16.5 pounds, and then 20 pounds of back pressure. So 
about three or 19.9, so a little less than three and a half pounds of difference between the two. So that's actually a fairly good curve, and that's kind of what we expect with from a good size turbo, a good size single turbo on one of these applications. So now let's overlay the S475. Hopefully, it won't get too confusing here. So on the S475, we had 17.8 pounds of boost pressure, 12.9 pounds of back pressure, but this thing crossed over a lot earlier at 4,600 RPM, so about 5 or 600 RPM earlier than the S4 or the uh, VS Racing Turbo. And out at the top, the difference was much greater. We had 17.3 pounds and 24.6. Um, I actually think that the drop shown on the VS Racing is also another um, error on the recording of the dyno. So I don't, I, it, it didn't show that on our logs or anything, so it was much more consistent. But anyway, the difference is quite a bit bigger. So you're talking about 7 pounds more back pressure than boost pressure, which is partly why that this S475 was more responsive, but also why it probably makes less power out at the top compared to that um, VS Racing Turbo. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what did you think about our tests comparing the two turbos, the Borg Warner and the VS Racing Turbo? Now I know I'm going to get the following comment, because I always do. Hey, when you run a turbo test, you have to make sure that everything's the same on the turbos. The wheels have to be the same, and the AR has to be the same, and the hot side, the cold side, blah, 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 blah. Here's the reality. They don't need to be the same. If the specs are all the same between the two turbos, they're going to make the same power. It's not a very fun test. I like testing things where there's going to be a difference. And the big difference between these two turbos had nothing to do with one being a Borg Warner and one being from VS Racing. It had everything to do with the hot side. Both of them were T4s, but there was a dramatic difference in the AR. The VS Racing Turbo, 1.25. The Borg, 1.0. So a tighter AR means this turbo would be more responsive. More response, better spool rate, more power down low, all that's good, right? But the problem is, you know what comes with that response rate? Back pressure. <laughs> that's a key factor in term determining response rate. Unfortunately, increased back pressure also hurts power at the top end. So the VS Racing actually made more power at the same boost level on the big end because it had less back pressure. So it's a lot like camshafts. Small cam, lots of power down low. Big cam, lots of power up top. But there's always a trade-off. That's how turbos work. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. Hey, tell a friend. I'll keep testing.